This video is about tuning the horns to match the full range driver. This measurement is using REW software. We're measuring it about one meter away from the speaker front. This is the full range driver with no crossover. Notice that you're on the right hand side though, you'll see some roughness in the upper frequencies. That is the peaking and the cone breakup that is seen in the full range driver above a certain frequency range, normally around two kilohertz. Our second measurement is the full range driver with a first order crossover, which is an inductance coil, one millihenry. Notice it rolls off very gently in the upper frequencies, but I don't think it provides sufficient attenuation for our project. Also, you may notice how rough it is in this graph here. This is unsmoothed. Later on, we'll show you what a smooth graph looks like, but the peaks are clearly visible. In this measurement number three, we're using a full range driver with a second order crossover. Note that on a second order crossover, you're using a coil and a capacitor to roll the frequency band off a little bit faster. That provides a good response in that we have sufficient roll off to add the horn without undue interference. Also notice that the peaks are much lower in frequency off to the right. This measurement here is of the horn two alone. There is no full range driver attached to it. It does have a first order crossover, which is a capacitor only to block the low frequencies. Notice it's pretty smooth with a nice roll off. Um, this is why we get a great integration with the full range driver. This is an example of how the horn two and the full range driver integrate to form a combined slope that is practically flat. Here the horn is in positive horn polarity, meaning that it's plus to plus, minus to minus, and this shows what happens when a second order crossover matches with a first order crossover in positive polarity. That's not the ideal way to do it because you usually get a bump at the crossover frequency, which you can clearly see here. Here we have set the horn to negative polarity, meaning that is plus to minus, minus to plus. This flattens the frequency response because a second order crossover and a first order cross crossover should be in reverse polarity to each other to ensure proper integration. You will notice that in reverse polarity, the frequency response is quite flat, even during the crossover area. Now what I'm showing you here is the difference between the full range driver's frequency response and the horn two added on with a second order crossover rolling the full range driver off. Notice that the frequency response is markedly different, much flatter with the horn two versus the full range driver. Note that the full range driver this frequency response is indicated in green. You can see a couple peaks there, pretty jagged frequency response in the upper frequencies. And the red trace is the horn two plus the full range driver, um, smoothing and unsmoothing. Mm -hmm.